Today I want to talk to you about one very, very famous and extraordinarily talented Spanish man, Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso was born in the late 1800s, a time when painting was having a bit of a difficult time. In the mid to late 1800s, painters around Europe and around the world had started taking interest in painting ordinary people's lives. They were sh showing scenes like this, of some farm girls sitting by the river and showing very, very great detail in their paintings, showing the realistic lives of ordinary people. But something happened in the mid to late 1800s that caused a lot of trouble for painting. And that was this sort of thing here. You might recognize this, it's Air Square in Galway. You might also recognize that that is not a painting, it's a photograph. In the late 1800s, photography started to become more and more common. And all of a sudden, instead of spending days and weeks and maybe months painting a perfect scene showing ordinary people's lives, a photographer could rock up, set up his or her camera and take a photo of an entire scene capturing the ordinary life of ordinary people in a couple of seconds. You can see that is an amazing photo of Air Square then, there from the 1880s, I think, where the turf and hay market was in full swing. Look at all those big cartloads of hay to feed the animals during the weekend, and they are cartloads of tar turf just there. You can see the people, and you can even recognize the type of clothes they wear, the type of transport they had. There's a woman in a shawl. So you can see the photography presented quite a serious challenge to paintings that showed ordinary life. Now we'll go back to Picasso because I want to have a look at his life before we get on further into what happened with painting in the late 1800s and early 20th century. So first of all, before we go on, can you think, well it says there in 30 seconds, tell your partner the names of, if you have a partner there at home, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister or the cat, talk to them for a few seconds about all the famous artists that you have ever heard of. Did you think of very many names? I can think of a few. You can probably think of more because you've had the benefit of all those wonderful art lessons with Michelle over the years. So we'll clip on, click on and see what we can find out about Picasso. Picasso was born on the 25th of October, 1881. So 140 years ago this year. And as I said, he was born in Spain, in the south of Spain, in Malaga. Now, I'm going to have a crack at this. His full name wasn't Pablo Picasso. It was Pablo Diego Jose Francisco de Paula Juan Nepomucino Maria de los Remedios Cipriano de la Santísima Trinidad Ruiz y Picasso. Did you get that? I'm not saying that again. He was named after family members and special religious figures known as saints. Not surprisingly, they didn't decide to call him all of those names. They just decided to call him Pablo. And his surname was Picasso. Do you know what your first word was? It was probably something like mama and or dada, or very often kids say no as their first word. However, Picasso's mum said his first word was pith, short for la pith, which is the Spanish word for pencil, because he wanted to pick up a pencil and draw when he was that young. Picasso's father, Jose Ruiz Blazo, was also a painter who specialized in painting birds. But when Picasso turned 13, Jose Ruiz Blasso gave up painting because his son was so good. He decided that there was nothing more he could do in the world in terms of painting except let Pablo fly. Now, Picasso was very, very heavily influenced by the death of his sister Conchita, who died when he was 14 at the age of only seven. His little sister died from a disease called diphtheria, and he was greatly affected by his sister's death for his whole life. When he was 19, after studying art in Spain, Picasso moved to Paris, and that was where he really started to blossom as an artist, where he began to become noticed. Before that, as I said, when he was 16, he left home to attend the best art school in Spain, the Royal Academy of San Fernando in Madrid. 
Picasso also went to Barcelona's School of Fine Arts. He was such a talented artist because he really kind of knew everything already because he was a genius. He often got bored and misbehaved in class and he was often in trouble and got sent to detention. Now this is where we come back to the history of art. Because, as I said to you, art was having a bit of trouble keeping up with photography in the late 1800s. So some artists started to think that maybe there were some other ways of showing reality. Not necessarily through showing exactly what we see with our eyes, but more dealing with what we feel in our hearts and our emotions and how we might see the world if we viewed it with our feelings instead of just our eyes. So one of the ways that developed to deal with that was an art style called Cubism. And along with an artist called Georges Braque, Picasso started a new, that new style of art called Cubism. It's a style of art which aims to show objects and people from lots of different angles all at one time. And this is done through the use of cubes and lots of other shapes. I'll show you the examples of Picasso's paintings in a minute. But for me, I think the idea of cubism, and everybody has a different idea of it, I'm sure, because art is really open to how you see it and how you feel about it. For me, they were doing something that a photograph couldn't do. They were allowing us to look at something from lots and lots and lots of different angles all at once, and maybe to give us a feeling of the whole person or the whole scene, rather than just one snapshot of it, which a realistic photo or painting could do. So Picasso showed things from lots of different angles. This painting here that we're looking at is called The Weeping Widow. And it's obviously a woman who has lost her husband. She's a weeping widow. I actually saw this painting once in a museum in London. And first of all, I was surprised because it's only about the size of one of your books from school, like your maths book. The second thing that surprised me was that when I saw it in person, I was so overwhelmed by the beauty of it that I almost stole it and ran away. Now, luckily, something made me stop and realise that if I did that, I'd be in jail in London for a very, very long time. So I didn't do that. But I was so, so overwhelmed by the beauty of this painting. It, it very nearly drove me to art theft. That's how amazing Picasso's work is when you see it in person. And there's, that was painted in 1937. And then we have Majoli, which is a very complex painting there. Now, you would need to see that on a much, much bigger scale to be able to dive into it because really with these paintings you have to dive into them it's not like looking at a picture you have to get into it that's Daniel Daniel Henry Canviler 1910 that's 111 years ago that was made now throughout his life his he also used lots of different styles he didn't just use simple cubist style although I shouldn't call it simple because there's nothing simple about it and one of the most well of these phases was known as this blue period this was about the start of the 20th century, 1901 to 1904. And he was depressed. He wasn't very happy in his life. He found it difficult to mix with his friends and he spent a lot of time alone. So his paintings were quite miserable from that time. Again, it was all about showing how he felt. And he used a lot of colours that show sadness, like dark blues and greens. He had other periods of his life, though, where his art showed different emotions. And they would include his rose period, analytic cubism and synthetic cubism. Now we move on to Guernica. Guernica is a city in the north of Spain. And during the Spanish Civil War, which was a time when fascist dictator by the name of uh, Franco took over Spain. He threw, overthrew a Republican government that had been elected in an election. So there was an uprising by this fascist army. And a very, very nasty, brutal war was waged for three years in Spain in the late 1930s. And there was lots and lots of cruelty. And sadly, eventually, the Republican side, the one that were democratically elected, lost. And Franco, who was a very cruel and nasty man, ruled Spain for a very, very long time after that. Picasso supported the Republican side, the side that had won the election. And he was horrified when he learned that the Germans, the Nazis who supported Franco, had bombed the city of Guernica and had killed many, many, many people. And he painted this painting here which shows some of the horrors that happened in Guernica that day now the actual painting itself is quite large and I'll see can I get a photo of it here it's actually almost I think three and a half meters long so it's a full wall 
but you can see lots and lots of different things happening in this painting here. And if you want, you can pause the video here and see what things you can pick out in the video. And this is Picasso's vision of what the bombing of Guernica by the Nazi bombers was like. They were supporting Franco against the Republican side in the Spanish Civil War, which is a war inside a country or between different people from the same country. And we get back to our slideshow here. So as I said, there is Guernica, which is a scene from the Spanish Civil War, which is a massacre of people in Guernica by the fascists. And this mostly says what I've already explained. That happened in 1937 when the German planes bombed Guernica. Now, until that time, really, there had never been a time when bombers bombed people's towns so, so, so severely. It was uh, something that was going to happen a lot in World War II. And the painting, as I said, is rather large. It's 3.5 meters tall and 7.8 meters wide. Oh, I was wrong. It's much, much longer than I thought. So 7.8 meters wide, almost as wide as our classroom, guys. Now, I already asked you what you could see in, in the painting. So let's see if we spotted any of the same things that it says here. A man lying on the ground, a crying mother holding her child, a woman in a burning building, and a woman running away. Let's see if we can see those in this picture here. Do you see a man lying on the ground, a woman holding a baby, a woman running away? I see somebody trying to hold a lamp up. Perhaps they were running around in the dark as well. And lots and lots of other fearful and scary things there. Let's see if we spotted them. So you can see here is the man lying on the ground. Here is a mother holding her child. Here is a woman in a burning building. And here is a woman running away. Now, Picasso didn't just work in paint. He also worked in other media. He was a sculptor, a poet, and he also worked in pottery. And you can imagine that cubism works very, very well in three dimensions because you can actually pull different sides of things apart and really, really show how you can look at things from lots and lots of different angles. Now, we'll leave the other facts about Picasso. I think that's quite enough for one day because... I want to show you some other things as well and get you to do some other things today. So thank you very much for listening and we will continue our work in the next activity.